The picture we're going to do today is of a Weblow house. This is the kind of structure that the uh, Pueblo Indians in the southwest part of the country lived in and still do in many cases live in. Uh, Arizona, New Mexico, um, out in areas like that. They're made of mud bricks uh, that are made from clay and straw and we're going to draw um, a version of that using steps. We're going to go with eight steps here, the first four. We'll add these pieces, then we'll add that, and we'll just keep going until we, en until we end up with this. So, let's get started. Uh, first, we want to add these two, two pieces. So I want to figure out where my hook on points are. There's one, and there's another one. And over here is yet another one. So there's one, two, three hook on points. From this one, I stretch it up a little bit. From these two, I stretch them out. So just do that with me. Stretch those out just like that. I'm going to just go straight up like a flagpole, and I'm sketching. Sketching strokes are very light and they're done lightly so that you can correct them easily. Every time I draw a line, I draw it light because I know there's a really good chance that it'll have to be moved and corrected. All right, there's the first couple of pieces. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exact, but you do need nice square corners and the correct hook on points as much as possible. You don't have to spend a lot of time erasing because the way these structures were built, you can make several mistakes and it still look pretty good. Now we're going to add this piece on right here. Now if you get behind, just, just don't panic about it. Uh, do the best you can. All this is still going to be in front of you for a long time. There are my two hook on points and I notice that the hook on points line up with these two lines down here. So I just go up and make the hook on point. And then I want to stretch it up. And when it looks like it's about as tall as the one in this picture, then I'll, I'll hook it together across the top. And I'm trying to give it nice square corners. All right, we're going to move on. Now, if you're getting behind, then you're just spending too much time worrying about things that are not that important. It's important that you get the major pieces, not all the tiny little detail. Here's a hook on point, and if I jump over, I see another hook on point, so I'm going to get those two. Now, I'm making sure I'm working on the right piece. I'm on this piece that we just drew. Here we go. On step three, hook on point, jump, hook on point. I'm looking at where these shapes come down and hook on. There's one, two places, so I'm going to do that. Hook on point, jump way over, hook on point. Now I'm going to stretch this out like I see in the picture. And I'm going to stretch this one out like I see in the picture. And these may not be exactly right, but they don't need to be. Now I'm going to go to the top. I've got to stretch it way out because it has to come up to meet this, this line. I'm drawing it kind of lightly because when you've got two lines that have to come together with a square corner, you have to kind of sketch one in very lightly so you know where the other one goes or how far out it comes. So I'm sketching very lightly. Now I'm going to darken that line in. It's not perfect. Fortunately, in art, nothing ever really needs to be perfect. It's art. Okay, we've gone through three steps. Now we're going to do number four. It gets a little bit confusing, so we're going to go very slow. There are two hook-on points. One, two. I'm just looking at where they are, and I'm going to mark them. Hook-on point one, 
hook on point two. Now what happens? I stretch those lines up, stretch it up, stretch it up. And here's a hook on point, and there's one. So, looking at my original hook on point, hook on point. Now when I stretch this one up, when I stretch this line up over here, I want it to stop about right there. So I'm just thinking it's going to come out about right there somewhere. I'm going to stretch that up. Stretch this over. And if they don't meet at the corner, then I'll just change one or the other line until they do. Stretch it up. Stretch it over. And hook it up. All right, we have everything drawn from step four. And if it's not perfect, that's okay. Not a problem. Moving on to step five. What do we do in step five? We start adding windows and doors. And we've got this little piece right there. It's like a triangle they got chopped off so I'm gonna do it first hook on point and I'm watching I'm paying attention hook on point slant that way slant that way and hook them up I've got a little extra here and there those are easy to erase although you don't really have to Now we're adding windows and doors. These are just rectangles and it really doesn't matter too much where you put them. Although it's good practice to try to put them in the right place. And on one side of the rectangle I double up the lines a little bit. See if I can show you that. Just One side of the rectangle is normal and then the other side I double the line just a little bit. Now I'm just going to keep going with, with this and putting doors and windows as much like I see them as possible. And you can color them in later, either, either with your pencil, which is not a great idea because pencil lead smears. It's really graphite, but that's beside the point. It smudges and smears and makes a big mess. It's better to color them with... Um, a crayon or a colored pencil. Colored pencils are wonderful except that you can't keep them sharp. They break constantly which makes them very frustrating to use. Alright, one more door. Oh, that's already there so great. We're ready to move on to step number six. There are four windows across the top. I think I'll go ahead and do those. They're just squares. If yours aren't square, that's okay. Now, don't get in a hurry. Just take your time. If you get a little bit behind, well, it's okay. You can get caught up. These are very, very, very simple shapes to draw. So you don't have to worry about it being perfect. Mine are a little bigger sometimes and a little smaller sometimes. But, you know, these are adobe houses. And uh, if you look at pictures of real adobe houses, they're not built with a lot of uh, precision. That is, not everything is exact. I'm just adding doors and windows where I see them in the drawing guide. And if you get one in the wrong place, it's not a problem. The reason there's a ladder over here in this uh, area is because they didn't build stairways inside. They got to the upper levels by the use of ladders. And 
for us that are used to stairs, that would be very strange. But if that's what you were, if that's what you've done all your life, then it wouldn't be strange at all. It would be very normal. So I am going to put that ladder. I'll give you just a minute to finish whatever little piece you're working on, and then we'll put that ladder together because it's uh, not square, it's slant. So you can look up and follow me on the ladder if you are ready for that. If not, then you can do it later, but you're on your own. I'm going to slant down, and then on the other, other side, I'm going to slant down. It's not a shape that, uh, it's not exactly a triangle because it doesn't come to a tip and have a base, but it is triangular. The steps of the ladder just need to be straight across, as straight as you can get them, but if you get some a little bit crooked, it's okay. I would say some of their ladders had a um, crooked rung here or there. All right, that's everything for step six, except coloring in the doors and windows, which we'll do later. And I need to tell you about the color of the house before I forget. There will be two colors on the house, apricot and dandelion yellow. If you don't have dandelion yellow, another yellow will work, but dandelion looks really good. The ground will be two colors, brown and dandelion yellow. That will make the ground a little bit different than the house. The cactus will be green, of course, and you can add little details like these little sticker things. Um, I'm just doing it now because it's quick and easy. And if you're doing that and you'll get carried away with it and do it for the next five minutes, you'll miss what I'm saying. So um, the other thing is the the rock wall, that's going to be apricot and dandelion yellow, just like the house. Now the pottery, you need to go ahead and decorate the pottery a little bit more. Um, on mine, let me see if I can get in close enough. See, when I get it up high, my light doesn't hit it. Anyway, they're a little bit decorative, and those can be very, very, very bright and colorful. Now, you're, you may be wondering about this extra wall. You don't get this one in yours. That's an advanced technique that we don't really have time to work with right now. Then the fence, I just made mine black, but you could make it different. You could make it a dark brown. It's up to you. The sky blue, and I added some heels back here in mine. And they're just quick and simple and easy to do. Oh, and these lines need to come over and hit the house and go off the edge. The copier chops them off on the outside edges. And I kept them back so that you'd have room for your house on the inside edges. Now, if you want those little heels, they're just like sliding boards. Or curvy lines like rainbows. And you don't have to do these, and I realize we still have some detail to put on the house, but that's kind of easy to do. And I wanted to make sure I got the most important things in on the video. I'll give you just a minute to get caught up if you need to. If you do not need to get caught up, then you could start coloring in your doors and windows. But I think we will go on to step number seven. Now, step number seven is just a lot of these little black circles. You don't have to count them. I think I've got five there, five there. It looks like four, fours and fives a lot. And just get them near the top. And if you end up with more than mine, that's okay. I think I've got a few more there than the original. These are details that are not that important. They're important but not so important that you need to spend a lot of time on them. And don't get in a hurry with these. Make them round, and you can go ahead and fill them in with your pencil. There's no need to go back to those and try to color them in later. It's very easy to do with your pencil while you're there. 
Now I'm trying to save you some time to color, so we've got to get the important parts and move on. Now before I would color this one, because I sketched it lightly, I would go back and darken my lines if I were going to color this one. But since I already have one colored, I'm not going to worry about coloring this one right now. I may later. All right, and the final step is just putting the little marks that indicate texture, in this case, straw. And um, the, oh, I see I left out a row of these dots. What these are, these are poles. These black dots represent the ends of poles that stretched across the room away from us. You can't see it because they go away from us. Anyway, they put these poles in and they would lay a, a roof on top of those. But the um, markings are just little, little flat lines. And they're everywhere. And it'll take a while to do that. Uh, you don't have to do lots and lots and lots and lots of them, but enough to give the viewer the idea that this is not a smooth surface, that this surface has a texture to it, texture meaning uh, that whether a surface is smooth or rough or what. Everything has texture, by the way, but that's an advanced concept for later in advanced art. Simply put, it's the difference of whether something is smooth to the touch. If you rub your hand on it, does it feel smooth? If you rub your hand across, does it feel rough? That's the simple explanation of texture. Now, that's about done. All this would need would be, um, well, uh, the bowls, the, the pottery rather, would need some detail. The windows would need to be darkened in. And then it would be ready to color. So here is the one that I did color. And um, go ahead and, and continue working on yours. Hope it was fun. And I can't wait to see how they turn out.